Welcome, my name is Josh Demude, and this begins the third unit of CSC 550, which will be on network flows and matchings. In this first lecture, we'll simply be setting the stage and looking at an overview of what this unit will be about. Uh, in subsequent lectures, we'll actually dive into real material. So talking first about the story so far. So in the first lecture, in the first unit of CSE 550, we introduced the idea of integer and linear programming. So this is a way of setting up very, uh, you know, a wide variety of problems. Um, we've specifically been looking at graph and combinatorial problems uh, as these so-called integer and linear programs. Uh, these programs have objective functions telling us what it is we're trying to do. They have constraints telling us what's valid and invalid in terms of possible solutions. And then we looked at ways like the simplex algorithm for solving these things and actually finding optimal solutions. Then in the second unit of this class, we looked at duality. So duality is this notion of being able to take a primal LP, put it through a conversion to obtain its dual LP, and then deriving certain relationships between the primal and the dual. So being able to have both of these at once uh, allowed us to investigate optimality through complementary slackness. It also let us do this thing called the primal dual algorithm, which was a way of iterating between primals and duals uh, to steadily get towards an optimal solution. In the second unit, we looked at shortest path as our deep dive example of primal dual. Um, and we saw that Dijkstra's algorithm comes out of this primal dual framework. Which brings us to unit three. In network flows and matchings, we will be continuing this primal dual investigation of familiar problems like flows on graphs and matchings. Um, but we'll be looking at them at least initially through that primal dual framework. So more specifically, this lecture is going to cover the following. The first thing we're going to look at is the maximum flow problem. And then using duality, we will show how it's related to the minimum cut problem and how these are actually a primal dual pair. Once we've established that, we'll be able to prove a famous result in computer science called the max flow min cut theorem. Um, it essentially says that the value of a maximum flow is equal to the size of a minimum cut. So solving one problem is the same as solving the other. Once we've established this, we will move on to algorithms for obtaining optimal maximum flows. Uh, it looks as if there's two algorithms here, Ford Fulkerson and Edmonds Karp, but in actuality, it's basically the same idea. It's just that the Edmonds Karp algorithm adds a very small ingredient on top of Ford Fulkerson to make it run efficiently. So we'll look at those pair of algorithms together. That will conclude our discussion of max flow, and we will then shift to a more general problem, the minimum cost flow problem. Um, here, once again, we'll define the problem. We will define an optimality criteria. So we'll do some theory to figure out when we have a minimum cost flow. And then we'll use that optimality criteria, that theory, to yield this minimum mean cycle canceling algorithm. What we're going to quickly see, even at just this second problem, coming from maximum flow and then minimum cost flow, is that all these algorithms essentially work the same way. Um, in Ford Fulkerson, it says, every time a certain something exists in the graph, use that certain something to find a better flow, and then keep doing this, keep finding those specific objects in the graph and keep using them to improve until those objects don't exist anymore. That's exactly the same way that this minimum mean cycle canceling algorithm works. There's a slightly different object, and as long as it exists in the graph, we can get a lower cost flow. So we keep finding and using those objects until they don't exist anymore, at which point we terminate and say that we have indeed found a minimum cost flow. The last problem that we will look at is maximum matching. This is actually something that we talked briefly about in the very in the unit zero, uh, lecture zero of this class. We looked at perfect matchings. Um, here we'll look at the more general version where we're just trying to find matchings as large as possible. Once again, we will do some theory, uh, specifically some graph theory, uh, to determine when we can improve our matchings. And then we will use that theory in Edmonds Blossom algorithm, uh, which is a general purpose algorithm for finding maximum matchings in graphs. As always, we have the corresponding textbook sections down here where the asterisks 
correspond to the material that's directly in these slides. And the unasterisked ones are just potentially useful background if you're looking to dive a little deeper. So in the next lecture, we will start with the maximum flow problem.